In this video, we're going to look at how to use transfer learning to create your own TensorFlow Lite object detection model for an Edge TPU device like the Google Coral or ASUS Tinker Edge T. Most of the steps can be found at this website and we're going to start by setting up the Docker container. So we'll click on this link and basically follow the instructions in this page. I'm on Ubuntu, so I'll follow the steps here. So we'll start by uninstalling the old version. Then set up the repository. Add Docker's official GPG key. And get the latest stable repo. We'll install the Docker engine. And then run the test image. If you get this screen, then installation was successful. So we can close this and go back to the Coral page. Next, we'll clone the Coral's tutorial repo into this Coral directory here. We'll change directory into it and clone the repo. We'll move into this directory and build the Docker image. Next, we'll specify the location for our training files and start the Docker container. If everything was successful, we should be in the Docker container at the TensorFlow models research folder. Now we can move on to downloading and configuring the training data. So to download the training data, Google have kindly provided this all-in-one shell script for us. We just specify the network type, which can be mobile net version one or version two, and whether or not we want to retrain the entire mobile net model, which can take up to 10 hours. If you do, set this flag to true. If you want to just train the last few layers, which will only take up to one to four hours, set this to false. This download took about 10 minutes, so I'm just going to cut straight to the end of it. Now, the training data we're downloading from Google is like a metric button of cat and dog pictures. So this data is about retraining a model to detect pets like cats, dogs, and other types of breeds and species. But if you want to use your own pictures, you'll need to replace the cat and dog stuff before you do the start training step below. In this case, I'm going to use my set of 522 pictures of the license plates. So I'm essentially going to retrain this mobile net version one SSD model to only detect license plates. So we'll start this data set replacement process by updating a pipeline config file found in learn pet CKPT. So that'll be nano learn pet ckpt pipeline.config. And we're going to update two things in here. First, the number of classes. So I'm only going to detect one object, which is a license plate. So I'll change this to one. And if you chose mobile net v2 SSD when you executed the previous step, then we'll update this to v2. But I'm using v1, so I'm going to leave this alone. We'll exit and save. Now remember, the steps in this Google Coral website describe how to detect pets like cats and dogs. And if you analyze the Docker container a little bit more, you'll find that all the pictures and annotations are in these folders. So that's list learn pet pet images, annotations, XMLs, and trimaps. So what we're ultimately going to do is replace all these cat and dog pictures and annotations with our license plate picture and annotations. Now, if you have your training data or images, the XML tags and tri maps ready, you can start copying them across into your Docker container. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. But if you don't have your training data, XML and tri maps ready, you'll need to create them. So let me show you how to do that quickly. First off, you'll need to download literally hundreds of images of license plates or whatever object you want to train. 
I just went to Google Images and downloaded like over 500 images of Victorian license plates and tag them one by one with a program called Label Image. You can download it by following the instructions on their GitHub page. You'll need Python 3 for this. So that's pip3 install label image. We'll do this in a new terminal outside of Docker. I've already got it installed, so this was pretty quick. And then we'll open it with label img. And we get this kind of photo editing program. And what you're going to do is open up one by one, all 500 images, click on this create rect box button and draw a box around the object you want to detect, like this license plate and tag it as something like license underscore plate. You can call it whatever you want. We'll save it. And it'll essentially create an XML file for you, which is just like some metadata about the image. You know, the size, the object name, and the bounding box area. When you finish doing that for all of your images, you will then split them up into the respective images and XML folder. Next, you'll need to create trimaps for all your photos. There's a good explanation of trimaps in this link here. And from what I understand in this cat and dog dataset, trimaps are basically a black and white outline of the object you want to detect. Now, I don't know how to generate trimaps for your own images or objects, so what I did was faked it. It's not an ideal solution, but it works. What I mean by fake it is copying a trimap from the pet dataset and using it in our own dataset. I know it's stupid, but it works. So I want you to copy a trimap PNG from this folder. So that's going to be sudo docker copy, the docker container name, tensorflow models research. And we'll just copy the first file in here, which I believe is an Abyssinian dog or cat. Abyssinian one, so Abyssinian underscore one dot PNG. And we'll copy it to our test folder. So that'll be home test license plate one dot PNG. Oops, do this outside of your Docker container. And you're basically going to copy and paste that 500 times or so for each license plate or each image that you have. I'll leave a link to the script I created that creates, you know, the 500 or so trimaps. When that's done, you'll need to create a text file called trainval. And the format of it looks like this. It's basically the file name, a space, and followed by 111. We're basically copying the same trainval.txt format from the pet trainval dataset. The numbers represent class ID, species, and breed ID. It doesn't really matter, just set it to 111. If you're detecting more than one object, then change the class ID to, you know, number two for your second object. And then we'll close this and just copy and paste this two more times to create test and list.txt. So they should be the same data set. In short, these files just tell TensorFlow which images are for training, which images we'll use for testing, and the files in list.txt is just everything. I'm being lazy and putting everything into each one, but you can decide which images you want to train and test. The last text file you'll have to create is a petlabelmap.pbtxt file. It just shows the item ID and item name. If you have more than one item, you can just copy and paste this and update the ID to two and then the name of the second object. I've only got one object, so I'll leave it as one item. If you've done all that, you can now replace the cat and dog pictures and annotations with our license plates. So I'm just going to do this the noob way because I'm not great with terminals. So inside our Docker container, we'll just go remove tens of models research learn pet pet and we'll recreate the folder structure with make directory tensorflow models research 
learn pet, pet, annotations, images, then annotations, XMLs, and trimaps. The first thing we have to copy into our Docker container is the label map from our downloads folder. So in our other terminal, we'll just copy that in. I'm just gonna copy and paste my command. Can't be bothered typing it out again. So that's sudo docker copy this pet label map file into our Docker container. So that's copied the label map file into our pet and object detection data folder. Next, we'll copy the list, train, val, and test text files. So we've copied list, we've copied test, and train, val, text. Then it's time to copy all the images across, all 522 of them. and then the XML and Trimap folders. We'll then create the TF records, which is basically Google's way of serializing our data. So let's make that a little bit more readable. Oops, we have to do that in our Docker container. So we'll paste that in. Now you might get a lot of warnings, but no errors. So technically it all worked. But most of this is just saying that there are certain functions that are deprecated, so just use the new ones. If you really want to update this, all you have to do is go to this particular Python script and go to line 318 and update the TF app run line with this new one here. And then you'll just repeat the same thing for these other warnings. Now we can finally start our training. If you want to retrain just the last few layers, then use these parameters. But if you want to retrain the whole model, then use these parameters. I used the whole model in my license plate detection system from these two videos and ran it for like 24 hours. But let's just do the last few layers for this example. And then we'll start the training job. Now, you might get a bunch of warnings again, but they're not necessarily errors, so we're all good, kind of. Then to monitor progress, we can open a new terminal and run this command. Then open the TensorBoard to track our status. And open up localhost 6006. If you get this error, it's totally okay. It means it's just still booting up. But once you give it enough time, you'll get a screen that looks like this. Now, as our model continues to train here, you'll be able to see the checkpoints of the model at this location. Now, it's really up to you how much you want to train it. They say one to four hours for the last few layers or up to 10 hours for the whole model. For some perspective, it took about an hour to get a checkpoint of 500. And when I left it for 24 hours, the checkpoint was in the tens of thousands, I think. When you're happy with the amount of time that you've trained it for, maybe it's, you know, four hours or 10 hours, you can stop the process with control C. And we'll go to the next step, which is compiling the model for our edge TPU. So we'll copy this line and let's choose the latest checkpoint which is checkpoint zero. So obviously, since we're using a checkpoint of zero, our object detection model isn't going to be great, or, you know, it's going to be pretty inaccurate, but this is just an example. So we'll paste this in and use a checkpoint of zero. Now this will output a TensorFlow light model called output TF light graph dot TF light, and it'll put that in the models folder. So let's have a look in there. And there's our file. Now we'll install the Edge TPU compiler in our Docker container. Remove the sudo in here. Remove 
remove the pseudo in here again. And that's our compiler installed. Then outside of our Docker container, we'll type this in. And we'll change directory to where our trained model is to compile it. And then lastly, we'll rename it to something a little bit more meaningful. So maybe I'll call mine mobile net v1 ssd plates and when we go to this folder we should be able to see our file in there there it is we're going to copy that into our tinker ht you can use ssh from this tutorial but i just uploaded it to my google drive and downloaded it on my tinker ht with chromium so we're inside our tinker ht now and i've copied the model into home Mendel. I've copied the model into all models. There it is right there, MB1 SSD plates TF Lite. Then we'll open up the OpenCV file from the Google Coral example project. So we'll CD into here. And we're just gonna quickly modify the detect.py to read our new model. So we'll change this to mobile net one SSD plates dot TF light and run the script. And there you go. We have our own object detection model working inside the Asus Tinker HT. How cool is that? Now it's pretty inaccurate because I only trained this model for like 30 minutes or less instead of four to 10 hours. The one I trained for 24 hours was way more accurate and you can find both of these models in my GitHub page. If you found this video useful, then hit the thumbs up and subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. And that's it for this one. I'll catch you in the next video. See you later. I wonder what life would be like as a license plate.